Section three is about making podcasts work for business. First off, we'll discuss what a podcast is. And most of you are probably, you probably listen to podcasts and it's just a digital audio program that is distributed over the internet. And you can download it on smart electronic devices. Uh, my husband loves the Phil Robertson podcast, Unashamed. And so he listens to that a good bit, especially when we're traveling. So awareness of podcasts has grown. It's become pretty popular because podcasts are portable. You can download them and it's a great way to be entertained and informed. All right, so podcasts have a lot of benefits. Well, first of all, they inform. You can engage and train staff with it. And then you can help convey authenticity by featuring the voices of employees and personalizing executives. It's a great way to get a message across and make it feel more personal. It does help if the podcast host is well known. For example, Phil Robertson is from Duck Dynasty. And so my husband listens to his podcast and it's about unashamed and it's basically kind of like a devotional Bible study. And um, that's when I think of a podcast, that's kind of what I think about. I like to listen to them um, if I'm walking or traveling, but they're a great way to be informed. So some instructors record their own podcasts. This is a great way to help auditory learners or learning for students with disabilities. These podcasts will help students. They can listen to lectures, interviews, sporting events. It's a great way if you're busy and you're traveling a lot. It's a great way to uh, get that information across. So can podcasts make money and do they last? Well, if you get a si sizable audience, it's going to attract uh, advertisers. They're going to want to promote their product. And if you get a large enough audience, you can get advertisers. Sponsors may pay podcasters if they endorse their product. I know the podcast on a shame they have sponsors and they do endorse products. And then disclosure or promotion deals is important in avoiding accusation of bias. So make sure that you know you say that this is a paid advertisement so that they know, hey, I'm getting paid to promote this. This section is on blogs and news sites. A blog is a website or a social media platform that has journal entries, so it's like a virtual journal. And it's usually written by one person with comments added by others. So how can businesses use blogs? Well, they can keep customers, employees, and the public informed. They can accumulate a far-flung vast audience, and they can share the brand's story in a long narrative form. So blogs can be beneficial to a business. Companies use blogs for public relations, customer relations, market research, internal communication, building the online community. It's a great way for people to come together, encourage discussion, and it says create a sense of community, which I really think it does. All right, and most of you are familiar with influencers. They're plugged in opinion leaders who boast large online audiences and followers. So you have your social media influencers. You also have brand, brand ambassadors. So they promote the product. 
And if they have a strong following, then it's, it's basically advertisement for that company. So they advocate or evangelize for brands and services. A lot of times, like if you, if you have Instagram, it'll say paid advertisement at the top. There's also engagement and viral marketing. And viral marketing is the rapid spread of messages online, much like the spread of infectious disease that passes from person to person. It gets out there really quick. If it goes viral, and large companies have social media experts and marketers, and they scrutinize the social media for information about their products. So they're going out there to see what's being said. Company blogs can create loyal followers who want to keep informed about events, product updates, offers, freebies, and other news. And it, it's a way for internal communication and, re and recruiting. You can use blogs to help build community, share expertise, stimulate employee involvement, get everyone talking, and uh, build that sense of community. Internal corporate blogs, they serve as a searchable archive of company knowledge. So this is a way for internal to share information and to have it there. The explicit purpose of Target's Pulse blog, for example, is to help our candidates get a sneak peek into what is what it's like to work at Target. So it, it, you kind of get a different view here and a different perspective, and it builds people from everywhere. You can. You can have people from all over the country get together through the blogs. So here's seven tips to master blogging. And I'm going to show you figure 5.6 because it provides advice on how to write a captivating blog. Before I show you that, I wanted to show you this blog. And so this guy, I think his name is Tim Ferriss, yes. And he has a podcast. It's got 500 plus episodes and almost 700 million downloads. So what he does is he interviews a eclectic mix of leaders such as Disney's Bob Iger, psychologist Brene Brown, and a filmmaker. And so he is... His podcast is on leadership and entrepreneurship, so some of y'all may want to check his podcast out. All right, let's look at that figure. So this explains how to write a captivating blog, applying the five journalistic W's to blog. Who, what, when, why, how. The big idea first, then your key facts, and your background and details. So... Fact check, earn your reader's trust, credit your sources, apply the inverted pyramid, edit, 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 proof, 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 because the blog is writing, so you're doing a lot of writing here. 